Hi, welcome to Let's Talk Gardening. I'm Norma Samuel with the University of Florida IFAS Extension in Sumter County. Today we're going to talk about Sorrel Hibiscus sabdariva. It's a relative of okra, cotton, and hibiscus. It is native to West and Central Africa and it's a crop that's popularly grown in the Caribbean and I grew up you know using a lot of sorrel. It was grown many years ago quite a bit in Florida and production subsided but sorrel is making a comeback because of the versatility of the plant. You can use pretty much all parts of the plant. The seed can be used as an alternative to coffee. You can also use the leaves as spinach or you can use them in salads. But the part of the plant that we treasure most is the calices of the flower. You can make jams, wines, jellies, and sorrel drink as we call it. So sorrel is also referred to as um, Roselle, some people may know it as Roselle, it's also referred to as Jamaican sorrel. So there are lots of different common names. So I'll tell you a little more about the sorrel plant. So let's get a close up. Sorrel plants are a wonderful addition to the home landscape and you can see that the leaves are deeply lobed and they have these beautiful red stems and they get to about four to five feet tall so when you're adding them to your landscape you want to plant them around four to five feet apart these we've planted in the ground since around late march so they've been here for a while and we've been lucky that we got a first early harvest and so it was a small one but what we do each year is that we save the seeds from that early harvest so that way we're kind of selecting for the plants that will you know produce early the problem that we've had with our sorrel plants the last few years is that they were being eaten by rabbits so every time we put a few plants out the rabbits would get them so we came up with a strategy this year to kind of get around the rabbits so the plants can mature so we use these plastic flower pots and we cut a hole in the bottom so you can see the hole there and then we planted the seeds or you can put your seedlings in there and there's some stakes that we have here that we nailed down in the you know the portion of the bottom of the pot that remains to keep it sturdy so it's very sturdy and that was how we've been able to get our plants to grow this year because the rabbits have been terrible in terms of fertilization you make your first fertilizer application about a month after planting and then you can fertilize about every four weeks usually we fertilize about twice and that's it and we fertilize with 10 10 10 so same fertilizer as you would use for your vegetable garden sorrel plants are a beautiful addition to the landscape because of the flower and unfortunately I don't have any blooms on these right now but the flower is similar to that of okra and cotton as I said before they are all in the same family but the flower of the sorrel has a pinkish hue to it so it's the yellow with the pinkish hue and then the center of it has a has a red a deep red so after the petals fall off, you have the calices of the flower remaining. And this is the treasured part of the, of the plant for me. So after the petals fall off, it will take about three weeks before you can harvest these. So what I'll do, I'll just take a scissors or a knife and I'll slip, I'll clip that off. And the more you harvest your sorrel, the more produce you will get, or the more sorrel you will get. 
there's a sorrel waiting here to come out in the axle. So once I remove this one, then it will allow that other one to develop. So that one will not develop until, fully develop until I take this one off. So there are several ways that you can go about um, taking the calices off. So you can simply use your hand and strip these off. However, there's a tool that we recently found online. We saw it online and then we were able to. This is the tool that we use to strip the sorrel as we call it. So removing the calices from the seed, um, seed bowl. And it's pretty much, uh, you could say like an umbrella handle. And we were able to source this from someone locally. And you can see there the end is kind of like an umbrella handle. And we got that for five bucks. And the edge here is a bit, sh is a bit sharp. So we just use that to strip it. So let me demonstrate that. This is the bowl and I'll just push this under there and you push that up and simple as that you have your sorrel stripped and you can see the hole right there. You can either freeze these, so I usually rinse and freeze these, or you can put them to dry. So it's whatever your preference is, but I prefer them, you know, frozen. It maintains the fresh flavor I find when it's frozen, um, but some people prefer it dry. The benefit of drying it is that it utilizes less storage space, but I, I prefer it um, frozen. I'm sure you're curious and want to find out, well, just how many plants do I need to put in the ground? And I would say if you have a small family, you can put in one or two plants and you probably don't want to plant as much as, as much as I do unless you have, you know, space to freeze them or you have space to um, you know dry and then store them last year we had a plant that came up in my flower bed and that's what we would call a volunteer plant so it's not a weed it would be a volunteer plant and I decided not to move it and it really liked the location and that one plant we were able to get about five, five and a half, five gallon buckets of sorrel just from that one plant. It was the most prolific sorrel plant we've ever had. We got so many um, bowls or, um, from that. It was just amazing. So, of course, the seeds that we saved last year were from that one plant because it not only flowered early, but it was very productive. So those are some of the qualities that you should look for when you're saving seeds from your plants. The desirable characteristics that you're looking for. So if you find a plant that you're growing and it has characteristics that you like, certainly save the seeds from from that plant. landscape we usually plant the sorrel as a hedge and when this you know matures it is absolutely beautiful so you see this row of plants with the red stems and then you see the blooms and if you have an area like this with full sun because sorrel requires full sun I would highly recommend you put in a hedge like this. Nothing better than having an edible hedge. The only disadvantage would be that you would have to replant it every year, but it comes to about five to seven feet depending on um, how well you're taking care of it in a very short time. So the only problem that we've had with regards to disease is fusarium wilt. Another problem that you may come across is 
root knot nematodes and we've spoken about root knot nematodes in a few episodes before but that's not a problem that we've encountered here in our landscape so this particular one is suffering from fusarium wilt and we do not apply any treatment and how do you know it's fusarium wilt well if you're watering and you notice that you know the plant isn't perking back up after you've given it adequate amount of water then you know there's something else going on so the first time we noticed this we submitted a sample to the plant disease clinic and that was the diagnosis that we got so after the first um, few years what we started to do was rotating the planting holes so you can rotate you know um, either within the row or you can rotate between the row so that way you're shifting the location of the planting holes each time so we're not spraying for the disease but rather we're using a cultural approach to containing the disease another pest problem we commonly see on sorrel here in florida is mealybugs and these are insects that suck the juices from the young growth on the young portion of the plant so you can see i have one here so i will just use my finger and squish it Sometimes if I'm out here and I'm watering, I would just, you know, use the hose and use a, you know, good stream of water to knock them off of the plant. So they're very easy to get rid of. If you are not paying attention and you end up with a high population of mealybugs, then what you can do is use horticultural oil. Now, remember you cannot use horticultural oil when the temperatures are high, but just constantly monitor your plants when you come out the young tips and you'll be able to get ahead of these mealybugs when they do um, try to attack your plants. Thank you so much for joining me for this episode of Let's Talk Gardening. I hope I inspired you. To go out and get some sorrel plants in the ground if you don't have any seeds find a friend or neighbor who could share some with you and get those plants in the ground and by no October November you'll be harvesting sorrel I'm Norma Samuel with the University of Florida IFAS extension in Sumter County thank you very much